Good day to everybody. My name is Dr. Sharan Srinivasan. I am a senior stereotactic and functional neurosurgeon associated with the Manipal Hospital Malaysia since the year 2009. Now, neurosurgeons, we are do both brain and spine surgeries. And today, as a functional neurosurgeon, I want to give you some information about pain syndromes. As a functional neurosurgeon, we deal with people having movement disorders like Parkinson's disease, hand tremors, dystonia, and the other things we deal with is somebody with pain. Pain is a pain for all of us. Pain is a pain for the patient who is suffering and also for the doctor to understand where, where the pain is coming from. So all of us have suffered with pain at some point of time in our life so far for sure. Whether it's a headache or a neck pain or a tooth pain or a back pain, knee pain, any pain that could have bothered us for a few hours to a few days, sometimes even longer. Now, the shorter pains, you know, you could have had a sprain, you could have had it while walking or even while playing some game or something like that. And those get away with the simple, you know, medications where, you know, it's a little bit of physiotherapy and you'll be alright. But there are a set of patients who suffer from pain for long periods of time, three weeks, six weeks or even longer. So somebody who's having a pain for three or six weeks or longer, which is not getting resolved with the routine type of treatment, we categorize them under another category called chronic pain. And today I'm going to talk about that specific chronic pain, which is creating a problem for so many people. And so the topic today is called deciphering pain syndromes. Let us start with headache. So headache is a headache for all of us. Like I said, we don't know what is causing it. It could be a, as ominous as a brain tumor. It could be an impending stroke. It could be a migraine or it could be something non-specific. It could even be headache coming from some reference from the tooth pain or from the neck. So anyway, so you should understand that you should never neglect a headache, especially if it is not the usual type. It's very severe, associated with vomiting, giddiness or something like that. So, you know, like I'll just remember the story I want to tell you now. Then imagine at 2 o'clock in the morning, somebody at home, your father, mother, brother, sister, come to you and chest pain. What comes to your head? Heart attack. Will you rush the patient to a gynecology hospital? Of course not. You would rush them to the hospital with cardiology services. You would ask for the cardiologist, ECG, X ray, echo, angio, whatever needs to be done, and fast so that the, the problem gets diagnosed and quickly resolved. Correct? Of course. Imagine the same 2 o'clock in the morning, the same person complains of headache. Will you show the same kind of urgency? Most probably not. You, you know, you, you give them a saradon, you give them a dolo and say, don't eat me ahead till morning. Let me see when we get up what's happening. So what I always say is, heart is important, brain is not. But the truth is, with 100% brain working today, it's difficult to survive in this world. So the important message here is, some of the headaches can be ominous. It could be of an impending heart attack, I mean, so an impending brain attack or a stroke or even a brain tumor or something like that has to be addressed urgently in the hospital with a CT scan or an MRI scan. So it's good to get uh, reach out to a neurologist or a neurosurgeon as quickly as possible so that the right diagnosis is made. And then the treatment can be followed up even with a general physician. So this is the first message I want to give as far as the cri severe critical headache is concerned. More often than not, it can be a migraine headaches, or it could be a stress-related headaches, it could be headaches because of myofascial syndromes coming from the neck muscles. If that is the case, that is more of the topic of today's discussion. So migraine, we will not talk today because it's a different world by itself. But many headaches are not migraine headaches. Commonest is called cervicogenic headache, pain starting the neck, slowly spreading to the head, going around the eye, temporal region, here, back, everywhere else. Some people even have a feeling of fullness in the ear, pain in the jaw muscles and things like that. So if you treat the neck, this headache disappears. So some of them are they are very stressful people, they bite their teeth when they have a lot of stress. Just by constantly biting and keeping the thing tight, they have pain here. The temporal region, you have, to, you have to find the trigger points here, you release that, I'll talk about trigger points a little later, and you get better from that. Now from the head, you will go to the face. The commonest pain in the face we call is called trigeminal neuralgia. The trigeminal, trigeminal nerve is a fifth cranial nerve that comes out from the brain and comes into the face. It has three branches, one on top here, one in the middle here, one on the lower branch here. And any of these three or all of these three can be affected with a peculiar problem of pain. Of which triggers pain called trigeminal neuralgia. This pain is distressing. There are patients with severe persistent trigeminal neuralgia who have attempted or contemplated even ending their lives by suicide. 
is that severe, they can't talk, they can't chew, they can't even swallow, swallow their own saliva. It's that bad. Some of them survive days together just sipping water and some food or some liquids, they can't even have food. So this can happen because of you know some problem in the nerve in the brain, or sometimes nothing is there, everything is normal. In that situation, if the tablets don't work, we do a special injection process called RF ablation in the face and to the nerve of the back. This is done in the OT and this can give very, very dramatic and long-lasting relief from pain. So if you are somebody suffering or you know somebody who is suffering from trigeminal neuralgia, who is not getting help by either medicines or they don't know what to do, please reach out to us. We will be more than happy to help them to sort them out and see how best is the pain relief that we can do. Now we will go downwards, we will go to the neck. The neck muscle, cervical spondylosis is another, you know, very very well abused word. Everybody is, the moment you have neck pain, you say, sir, I have spondylosis. Every neck pain needn't be spondylosis. Spondylosis is the wear and tear of the, of the bones and the joints that happen over time. But the neck pain can be because of the muscle, can be because of the joint, because of the disc, or because of the nerve roots coming out, or a combination of all of this. So it all depends on your activities, like somebody holding a phone like this and working for prolonged periods of time, somebody not sitting in the right posture, somebody wearing the headphones and trying to tilt the head and look at something at the distance, whatever the cause is. These are all, many of these things, have, all these pains have gotten worse today thanks to the pandemic of the last two years. Not much of physical activity, everybody is restricted to their houses and this curse, the new curse called the work from home. You know, as a doctor we can't work from home, but many of these people are working from home, prolonged hours and you know with the probably inadequate you know, furniture you know, which is not ergonomically designed for the person, <coughs> this can be a big issue for us. So neck pains can come, neck pains can radiate either to the head like I said or it can come down the hand, the shoulder, the hand up to the fingers, you know pain, numbness, burning, a subjective feeling of weakness, one hand, both hands, we don't know what it is, so it can be a slip disc in the neck or it could be a nerve getting pinched on its way out or it could be trigger points in the, in the shoulder or in the neck. How do we diagnose that? First we start with an MRI scan. We will look at the MRI scan to see what's going on. If there's a large slip disc, then we will need surgery. If it's not so much, then we need a medical line of treatment and some good pain management processes, either trigger point releases, myofascial release, you know, stretching, ergonomic exercises, I mean assessments and exercises, and you know, basic physiotherapy. Then we go down, we go to the low back pain. Now low back pain, like uh, I always say, is the single biggest cause of loss of man hours in the world today. Can you imagine? Not cancer, not diabetes, not heart problem, not BP, but a silly stupid problem for low back pain. Why? Again, like they become couch potatoes, we sit in odd postures, prolonged periods of time, we don't keep sit straight like this, that can become a problem. So low back pain has to be addressed because again it's impacting quality of life. So low back pain can remain in the low back or can start radiating to the hip joint or all the way down to the toes. Either one side, both sides and again, like I said, like the upper limb it can be quite distressing. So in that situation again you need medical attention, you have to go to a spine surgeon, uh, you know a neurospine surgeon like me and you look at what's going on and we do an MBA exam you clinically, it's very very important to listen to your story, examine it clinically see what is matching, what's going on and look at the right investigations, is it an x-ray, is it an MRI scan, whatever needs to be done and then we match what's on the MRI to what's going on with you and see whether that's causing the problem. Many times what happens is, you know, many of us because of wear and tear we can have small slip discs in the back. It doesn't mean that every disc is, needs to be surgically operated. Please keep that in mind. So you have to make sure that you go to an expert who understands this. So many of these things back pains, neck pains can be managed without surgery. With, with, with just good ergonomic assessment, good pain management, uh, physiotherapy and ergonomic assessments or you know you can do it, you can do it uh, along with, uh, along with uh, you know some injections you know to get, get rid of the pain. Okay so I was telling you about the low back pain, low back pain comes down the leg. See this is a model of the low back, you know this is the lumbar spine as you can see here all the way down, you will notice that this is, the, this is the front of the spine, this is the back portion and partly you see this, these things coming out here, these are the nerve roots, the nerves come out, the spinal cord goes down like this and the nerves to the legs comes out on either side, 
In Matidari, what you see between any two bones is this rubber portion here is called like a bush or a shock absorber. This is called this disc. This disc once it slips out, it has it is like a shock absorber. When it slips, what happens is it goes and pinches this nerve. In nerve pinch or whatever, in nerve any how whatever, wherever this nerve goes, you get pain. That is what is called a sciatica or the radicular pathi or pain going down the line. So MRI picks this up. CT scan does not pick it up. So we have to pick this up on MRI scan. Once we see it, we'll see how big it is. Too much. If it's come out too much outside, it will not go back inside. It's like a slip disc. It's like the toothpaste coming out of a tube. You know, even Colgate can't pull it back after that. Once it's out, it's out. So that's what happens. So if it is very significantly out, you're not able to sit, stand, walk. There's already a weakness in the leg or toes or numbness or weakness. Then surgery is a must. Don't worry about spine surgery at all. A lot of people will scare you. Oh, you don't get spine surgery done. You get paralyzed. This will happen. Don't have any fear at all. We have thousands of patients we have operated, and they have done very well. Enough of them are back at sports, work. Don't worry at all about it. That's my personal promise. So don't worry about that. But it doesn't mean that every every slip disc needs surgery. Not at all. You have to get evaluated by the whole team of pain physicians. You know, headed by me, we have an international pain physician, we have pain therapists, we have ergonomic specialists, we have psychologists in our team. All of them together will evaluate and see what is happening and then decide what is the right plan for you. So coming back to this model, you see how it is happening. You can press on the side or you can press in the middle. If you press this in the middle, the leg pain may not be too much, but if you have difficulty in walking, you'll have numbness in the legs while walking, that can happen. Many times it's not the disc at all, it has these joints. These joints can have wear and tear problems. There's a called facet joints. So this you will not know. You just come to us with back pain. Each of it has to be tested. It's like circuit checking, but each joint has to be tested. And based on that, we can give if the, the physiotherapy does not help or local injection doesn't help, then we give some special injections to the back, either an epidural steroid, a transferominal steroid, or even a radio frequency ablation. These are all things that can be done in the routine with very, very good results. And then we, we do we put you through a, a set of therapeutic exercises and you get better. So remember, what is most important thing is you come to the right expert who is able to assess you who is able to get your full story out, do a good clinical examination, come to some kind of a diagnosis, get the right investigations done, connect your diagnosis and symptoms to the scans that have been said or investigation that has been done, come up with a comprehensive plan, then decide what has to be the right way forward. You don't need to be dramatically treating or everything surgically. Remember this very, very important. But even if surgery is required, don't have any fear. It can be done very well. And patients are being back to sports, back to active work. Don't worry at all about it. But having said that, we have a lot of interventions that we can do. A lot of people in the back pain, neck pain, headache have got what is called trigger points. They are knots in the muscle. They can come all over the place. You see the picture they put up. You know, the knots are everywhere. And those knots, you can press yourself and feel. Anywhere you can feel or somebody can help you to feel. These knots are there, and if there's a technique to release those knots, that's what the physiotherapists and manual therapists do. When you do that, the pain goes away. And then you stretch again, it's a good, uh, you know, stretching the myofascial release and therapy, and that works very well. If that doesn't help, sometimes those trigger point injections have to be given. That again is given with uh, the, the team of pain experts who are there in our team. And if that also doesn't help, or if it is deeper, coming from the joint, coming from the nerve root, then we can deposit you know, either steroid there, or the worst case scenario, the pain is very severe, it is not going to get better, then we do something called radio frequency ablation. We burn a nerve around the joint, so the perception of pain will come down. So what is the message I'm giving you? You know, the suffering with pain, it can happen to anybody. But you know, you know pain can happen to everybody, but suffering is optional. So you can come to us, please don't keep on suffering from the pain and you know, compromising the quality of life, saying, oh, my life is like this, what do I do, I can't go here, I can't go there, I can't do this, I can't do that. Please don't do that. With today's modern life, you're able to live longer, but quality of life is equally important. And please make sure pain does not interfere with the quality of life. Please come to us at Manipal Hospital, Malayshwaram. We'll be more than happy to do a comprehensive assessment for all the pains that you and your family has. And we promise you, we'll give you a great result. Thank you for watching us on Facebook Live. I hope it was valuable for you to understand the problem of pain that can happen to uh, us or our near and dear ones. 
So please feel free to share this video as widely as you want anybody in your loved ones who are suffering with this pain so that you know they can reach out to us and make a difference. If you have any questions, please type in the chat box below. Our team will, we will get back to you and try to set up either your online call or a physical call or whatever it is as soon as possible. And you know, reach out to us to help you to have a pain-free life. Jai Hind.